It's my pleasure to inverse in, introduce the first of these, David Sheep, who's in Michael Taylor's group. Um, and uh, he's going to talk about, uh, well, just a little bit of background. David uh, got his bachelor's and master's in pathobiology from U of T, and he's currently studying uh, with Michael Taylor uh, on the genomes of medulloblastoma. I think we're going to hear a little bit about that. Title, we think, is Investigating Molecular Subgroups of Medulloblastoma. Thank you. Thank you. So, just by way of um, warming up the floor and introducing uh, for the next speaker, we can talk about mitochondrial stoma, how we approach it. And um, so, in mitochondrial stoma, we're hoping to motivate people to start viewing this as four different diseases that are defined by the molecular subgroups. So, we're going to talk about the way in which you can do that. The motivation behind it and the, and the current opportunities for starting to do uh, to, to subtype metroposoma into these other subgroups. So, metroposoma is the most common living childhood brain tumor. Uh, although its survival rate is high uh, given current treatment consisting of uh, surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy, there's drastic side effects that the survivors suffer. Uh, so, there, of course, there's a push to not only, only uh, giving the right dose of chemotherapy and radiation that the patients actually need to survive, but also developing new targeted therapy that could spare the patients of uh, the, the drastic uh, side effects, including neurological, intellectual, and physical disabilities. Medjugorje stoma, the, the main hallmark feature is an anatomical location, which is the cerebellum, and his, histologically uh, is divided into four different subtypes shown there. These are uh, useful for clinicians to gauge how much radiation and chemotherapy they, they're going to deliver. Um, and in, in, in other types of tumors, um, the, the cancer is generally subdivided based on an anatomical location first. And based on the, and, and after that sub first division, the cancer is then subdivided into different subtypes with, uh, based on histology. And this is just a list of all the different subtypes of brain tumor you can get. That's based on histology. You can see Medjugorje in the center is very small. It's only, it, is, it is the most common, but it's only one of the different subtypes of uh, brain cancer. Uh, a problem with using histology to classify any type of tumor is that the, 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 um, the, the, the pathologist can give uh, a different diagnosis each time he sees a slide, and depend on the slide that he actually sees. And different pathologists might have competing, uh, com competing diagnosis. So in order to resolve that, we hope to develop a way of, uh, of dividing these tumors up into different subgroups using an objective approach, and that can be done really and uh, in a very uh, rapid manner. And recently, uh, several studies have delineated the existence of four different subgroups that are defined based on the RNA expression profile. Shown here are the four different subgroups, mainly WINT, Sonic Hedgehog, Group 3, and Group 4. And just in this publication, I've shown you how this, these are we determine these subgroups it's based on how clustering, an unsupervised uh, clustering method where the different regular markers that are upgraded within the subgroup. And these different subgroups have different clinical and pathological, pathological characteristics. Of course, that was my, done on, based on microarray, so how can clinicians start you, to use this to uh, use this knowledge and translate into the clinic? Well, and, and this was the first question we hope to address. And we turn to this new technology called nanostream, where it's uh, you have you have barcoded probes that bind to the target transcript, and th this does not require any PCI application, and it can be done in the multiplex manner. So we use this technology to uh, to to, to uh, measure the levels of markers that are, that, are, that uh, represent each subgroup, and we can do this in a successful manner on uh, FMP material which is the, 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 type, the type of material that is usually available in the clinic. And we can achieve a greater than 95% accuracy as long as the material is not too late. So which is, uh, which is exciting for the clinic clinicians because they can now finally start using this tool to, uh, to subcategorize the uh, magical stone into different subgroups. Now why would we want to start doing that? For the future, of course, the, the, the hope is to develop targeted therapy and as way, uh, as uh, in, in, in one way of doing this is by looking for common changes in the genome using common profile. Uh, this is an array platform that we used a few years ago, and so it just consists of uh, extracting the DNA, put it on the chip, you send it to an expensive machine, and it gets some uh, some person monkey around the computer and get results. Pretty fast like this, 
where each dot here is, uh, is re represents the DNA copy number uh, at each locus. This is on a log scale. You can see this first, uh, first gray line indicates a balanced genome, uh, where there's no copy number change, and there, there, there's mutants in the genome that are gained, so these are shown in red, mutants in the genome that are blue, there are losses, where the tumor has lost uh, copies of that genome. And in regions of gain, you can see that uh, you, can, you can look for what genes are disrupted by these uh, regions of gain or implications. And these are, can serve as target uh, for its, uh, candidates for targeted therapy. And you may want to, you might want to develop drugs or SRM against. By, uh, by, by looking at different genes all across the uh, genome, you can start uh, and across different patient, uh, patients, you can start looking, you can start seeing a pattern emerge where different pathways seem to be seems to be disrupted uh, at different levels by TNA copy number changes. You can see here um, members of the Ackman TGI that are receptor family all all amplified, uh, which begs the question whether this pathway is activated in, in cancer and indeed when we look for other members of its uh, the same pathway. All of the common name changes, recurrent common name changes, seems to suggest this uh, this, this concur, uh, the, just different mechanisms for the tumor to upregulate, uh, to, to activate this pathway through common name changes. And at least one fifth of all uh, group three metabolism exhibit this pattern. And this pattern is not seen in metabolism of different subgroups because these are specific to the molecular subtype of, uh, of, of, of metabolism. So this specific subtype of metabolism. Well, of course, that's in the future, but how, how can clinicians start using this, uh, this technology today to, uh, to, to make an impact on, on treatment of patients? Well, one way they can do it is by uh, altering the dose of the chemotherapy and radiation so that the patient gets the, the, the dose of the chemotherapy and radiation that, uh, that, that, that they need in order for uh, to treat the disease. Currently, uh, when a patient walks through the door, they're stratified into three groups, so infants, they're, they're not given any radiation, radiation at all because of the uh, drastic side effects. Uh, if they're older than three, then they're stratified into standard risk, so have a standard risk of succumbing to disease, and high risk as a patient that will likely die as a result of the disease. These patients are given a higher dose of, chemo, uh, of radiation in order for them to, uh, 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 in order for the patients to have a better chance of surviving the disease. And our, and our question is, can we do better with the knowledge of the molecular subgroups of magical stomach? And indeed, we can. We, in using both molecular subgroup typing and uh, looking for genetic markers that are specific to each subtype, we can stratify uh, this subgroup of magical stomach patients into three risk groups. And these risk groups exhibit drastically different survival, both in the discovery cohort, you can see how this pink uh, line has, uh, has very good survival. So you can start thinking about reducing the therapy for these patients that have very good survival in you know, order to spare their, 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 uh, the, the, the toxic, cytotoxic side effects. And also in the validation cohort, you see the same thing. So we're reinforcing the, the validity of the, uh, of the stratification model that we've de developed using molecular subgrouping and cytogenic markers. And we've done this for the other subgroups of Medjugorje and Swam. This still are a study of, of many uh, of thousands of uh, common number changes down to just six markers that clinicians can use in the clinic uh, uh, to, 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 to stratify Medjugorje and patients into different risk groups. In close, I can acknowledge members of the, uh, the Magic Consortium, which, from, from which we collected uh, oral tissue samples without the collaboration, because any of these, none of these studies would be possible members of Taylor and the DKF staff. Thank you.